We have met so many interesting people who are ordinary people. They've done extraordinary things. I like to be the funny one and bring some humor to the show. I think the show is for everyone because we're motivating, we're inspiring. We offer hope to our community. The Girls Show, I believe, is a show that empowers women. And we're able to ask some of the questions and discuss some topics that you might feel uncomfortable doing. And that's what we're here to do. Hey everyone and welcome to the girls. We're back with brand new shows. It's me and my mom for this one. We are via Zoom and we're making it happen. Hi mom. Hi honey. How you doing? We're good. I mean, we live next door and we're still being safe here. Hi mom. I'm just so happy that we have something to do because I can get dressed up. <laughs> well, listen, yeah. last show I actually got dressed up for like mind over matter. But today, I will show everyone, I have one nail that's not done, and I didn't get to it, so I, you know, this is how I normally look when I'm doing interviews, and I just wore, like, regular pants with, like, elastic waist for today, because I've been sitting, I'm literally in my basement, I've been sitting here all day doing interviews for the news, so keeping it real on the girls, keeping yeah. it real. Well, I have a fancy top one, but on the bottom, I have jeans and sneakers, so I'm just like, you know, whatever whatever yeah. it takes to get the job done. And then I have the dog wrangler today, thank goodness, because last time I think Gucci wanted to be on the show because he kept coming in here. So dad's right. here today. We have all the background uh, noise of kids and dogs and we record the show in the afternoon. It's usually when my kids are walking in the door asking me 15 questions or Snapchatting me. So I'm sure that's going to be happening soon. Yeah. Too. <clears throat> and then we have the big dog meeting outside my house every afternoon. So Gucci will probably be wanting to go out. Well, I love it. I love it. Well, let's talk about some girly stuff before we talk about our guests, um, you know, with, with everything that's uh, going on. And I, I asked our, our followers on, on our page and on, on my Facebook page about makeup because now that I am getting ready again and I've saved so much money this year with not being, having the full coat of makeup on. Um, but I, I asked, you know, do you use the name brand or do you use the generic? I mean, I use, you know, I, I have the Mac and I have, you know, all the ones from Sephora, but then I also, you know, since I'm shopping a little bit more online, being a little more thriftier with two teenagers in the house. Um, did you ever hear of she, she glam? I have that. And I found this new, um, eyeliner. It's actually by Maybelline and it's one for, oh, I love Maybelline. I love yeah. Maybelline. Yeah, and it's one for, I don't know if anyone can see it. Again, it's not an endorsement. It's just something I've, I've tried so many eyeliners because I like the wings still. Um, and it's, it's, it's this one. It was on Amazon, and it's super cheap. Um, I think it was like five bucks. And it's called Curvitude. Oh, um, Curvitude. You have a Curvitude. Curvitude. So we asked some people about that. I don't know what your opinion is, but... There were mixed reviews. Some people said as they got older, it was more about the chemicals and the, um, the ingredients in the makeup um, when it came to like the skincare um, of why they use better products. Yeah, well, I've always had sensitive skin, so I always watched what was in the makeup. And for my eye makeup, I do like um, IT brand makeup. I do use their eyeshadow. <clears throat> excuse me, I like all of their skincare products as well, but for mascara, I can't get away from the drugstore mascara. I still use Maybelline. I love Maybelline mascara. The eyeliner you're talking about, yeah, you and I have the puppy dog droop eyes, so we need wings. Yeah. You know, it has to be a wing. How about that one eyeliner that I gave you, though, that has like the little stamp around it, it stamps the little wing, and then you draw to it? Wasn't that a disaster? <laughs> I, I hated it. I hated it. Getting older and getting like kind of yeah. there. I put the stamp on, had like a little stamp. Um, and I literally had like a big black, it looked like a smudge <laughs> of, of, of it on. So I had to take it off. But if anyone follows makeup or cares about wearing makeup, what we're told is the name brand has, you know, some better ingredients in it, if that is your thing. Um, I personally, like my mom, I like the Maybelline. When it comes to skincare, that's different. We're talking makeup. If it's eyeshadow right. or right. eyeliner, you know, the cheap stuff. But then again, I do have 
you know, the other products like mom, you have like the it and the Mac. I, I do like Mac. Yeah, I do. I really do. It it is my thing. It, it is it. It is it for you. It is it. And I like the little sets that they send because then there's all different eyeshadows and highlighters. I love the um, lip and the highlighter from it too. I love their shading kit. Yeah. So I don't know if it's coming across great. I did my own lighting. I'm not like versed in lighting and all that other stuff. So it is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> you, get, you don't get upset. 2020, yeah, exactly. 2021. Well, yeah. our next guest is a returning guest. She knows a thing or two about makeup because she is a, a model and she's an actress. She's a host and a producer. It's Amber Ettinger. She is originally from the area and she is back. We have her in New York City and we'll talk about life there. We're going to talk about life with children and being married. So a whole different ball game for her. And of course, working through this pandemic. When will it end? We'll be back. You're watching the girls right here on SSP TV. Welcome back, everyone. You're watching the girls here on SSP TV. We're on cable. We're on YouTube. We're all over the place. And we are happy to have back returning guest, Amber Ettinger. And she is with us via Zoom from her apartment in New York City. Amber, thank you. Thank you for having me. This is fun. <laughs> It's so, it is so much fun. How does it feel being connected with Pennsylvania? You've been gone for a while. I have been gone for a while and I haven't even been back to visit in so long. And I really miss my third base hoagies and my snaps pizza. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Very good. Some things, you know, never change, you know, especially when you're from a small town like we're from. It's a place that, you know, we have a lot of great food, a lot of good bars and a lot of good churches. Yes, exactly. So much good food. And, you know, when I go back, I definitely like to stock up and bring it back to New York with me because I can't get a hoagie like that anywhere. <laughs> now, I will say your husband owns a, a pizza place, correct? Yes. Oh. Does he know of cold pizza like we have here? Has he tried it? He's tried it and he loves it, but we, he also likes it better when we put it in the toaster and warm it up like he's not that big of a fan of it cold but he definitely tried it liked it but he prefers it warmed up and yeah he has a pizzeria but it's funny I've actually never tried their hoagies there and even hoagies like nobody says hoagies here they say subs or something and they're, people make fun of me they're like hoagie what's a hoagie <laughs> well a hoagie's like a stogie uh, yeah, I like the pizza warmed up too. I'll eat it cold if I'm three o'clock in the morning and raiding the fridge, but you know, <laughs> that guy or first thing in the morning breakfast, but cause pizza is good any which way, but yeah, I do prefer it warmed up too. Yeah. With some hot peppers, you put hot peppers. Oh mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. We can just talk about food the whole time. And I know that's it, especially the stuff around here. Cause we have such good homemade traditional items um, but we wanted to touch base with you I know we did a short interview on um, the news recently but you know you're you're definitely known especially where your claim to fame would be when your videos went viral as the Obama girl right yes and I've actually just been putting some videos together because I want to kind of organize all the videos that I've done and as I'm going back I'm like wow 13 years ago and then I'm like, wow, I did this video. I forgot I did this video with this candidate and this guy. Like, it's so crazy me just going down memory lane now and seeing like, because when I was in it, in the zone, I was in the zone. And now that I'm looking back, I'm like, wow, I can't believe I did some of this stuff. It's wild. It, it's amazing how far your career has come, though. But starting out as the Obama girl, um, if for people who aren't familiar with you, take us through some of the things that have happened in your life, where, where you've gone and how you left the area and where you've gone to California and all the other things. Just, just give them a rundown a little bit. Catch us up. All right. Well, I, I lived in Hazleton. I, I grew up a lot of, actually many places. My dad was in the army, but most of my life was spent in Hazleton and 17 years old. I moved to New York to attend FIT where I studied fashion design. And while I was there, I was modeling and doing some commercials and different things, but primarily focused on school because believe it or not, fashion design major was extremely hard. <laughs> um, I had all my liberal arts and I had to design like 200, 300 piece collections whilst you know studying for my math exam. It was just a lot of work. Um, 
And I actually was in college when September 11th happened. So it was a really, it actually became a really stressful time for me. It wasn't fun to be in New York. I didn't feel safe. I was, this was the first time I was away from my family. So it was a really, really scary, sad time. And I was actually on my way to class um, and had just taken the subway train underneath the World Trade Center right before the attacks. So it's kind of like a really, school for me was stressful. I, I, if I could do it over, I would totally want to have that experience. Um, done over but anyway uh after the after i got done and i graduated i was just working as much as possible doing a lot of like swimsuit modeling and traveling around and then that's when i got a random email from a guy named ben Rellis who was like hey you know i saw your website do you want to do this funny video and i'm like well thanks for reaching out i'm in spain i remember being in spain shooting and i'm like i'm you know over here and i'm doing this thing and whatever and he's like i'll wait for you to come back. And to make a long story short, we met up at a Starbucks uh, in New York. He pitched me this idea. It felt like a Saturday Night Live sketch. And I was like, yeah, I'll do it. YouTube, what's that? Oh, where they put the cat videos? Okay, got it. Let's do it. And we we shot the video a few weeks later and it just completely changed my life. Um, and from those, that one video, we ended up making, I guess, 40 or more Obama Girl videos, not to mention tons of other like music satire parodies and things like that. And then oh, I feel like I'm talking a lot, but then um, wow. <laughs> when it, you know, I got to do amazing things like go to White House Correspondents Dinners and I was on Saturday Night Live and E! Channel actually voted me number one hottest woman on the web, which was crazy. I remember watching the countdown show and I'm like, wait, there, I'm supposed to be on the show and I thought I'd be like number 20 and then I was number one. And I was like, what? But then that got totally overshadowed because that same night my boyfriend and I were like, outside on our balcony with a friend and we swore we saw like aliens in like ufos in the sky so like i remember that night so vividly because we thought we saw ufos in the sky the night that i was told i was hottest woman on the web so that didn't even matter we were like what's that in the sky amber <laughs> you're hilarious i will say one thing you know and some people you would think that you're not approachable um but you have always been down to earth and kept it real and I don't know if that's from your Hazleton roots or what, but you, you always speak highly of where you're from. And um, that's something I do admire about you that you never forgot where you came from and you have such a great family. And I think because of your open mindedness to your surroundings is what has, you know, really helped you find success, especially when you say this guy is pitching you this idea and you know, you could have been like, Oh, that's, that's not good enough for me, but you did not You, took the time to hear it and you felt it was a good idea. So that was, that was like a great experience. I didn't know that you were in college at the time of 9-11 and we all know where we were for September 11. How ironic that you were in that part of your life for 9-11 and now you're back in the city during the pandemic. So let me hear a little bit about how life was when the pandemic first started and how it transpired throughout the couple the several couple months because you have a family now you have children so how has it been living in the city during a pandemic Ooh, depressing yeah depressing to see the city that was so vibrant and you can go anywhere at any time and just do anything now it's like i haven't i feel like i haven't left my house hardly in the last year like i was driving down the street the other day it was about 32 degrees outside and people were outside outdoor dining and i was like wow people are really just going for it and taking advantage of everything they can just to like get outside and still support these restaurants and i think that's really amazing but then i looked internally and i'm like wow i haven't been out to eat since last valentine's day like i haven't done anything i i i felt I feel like I have to just worry about my kids. I don't want to expose myself and do all these things. And, you know, cause there's still stuff that you could be doing here, but I choose to just kind of stay home, protect my kids, make sure we're all safe. We don't get the virus. Um, but it's sad. It's sad to see, you know, all these businesses. I live in a residential neighborhood, but there's also businesses on the avenues and I, they're all shutting down and it's, it's sad. Like for the first couple weeks of, when we got shut down, I felt like we were in like a silent war zone. Like I, I had, I went to head out to the grocery store and you know, there was no one around and it was just silent and quiet and no, not even cars and nobody, it was just so weird and so surreal. 
How are your children? How are your children been adjusting if you do venture out with the masks and everything? It, it is scary. Yeah, I mean, my son's not even three yet, so he's really not really a big fan of wearing the mask. Um, so because of that, we're not traveling. We're not going to the museum that just opened for limited capacity. You know, I'm not taking him to places because I'm fearing that he won't keep it on and then they'd kick us out. Mm -hmm. So we're mostly just staying home and trying to keep busy and have fun here. And I feel bad because before this, he had a great social life. He had play dates, he had music class, soccer class, and now he has mom class all day. <laughs> well, let's, on a positive note, through 9-11, you're able to find fame and uh, really boost your career. During the pandemic, guess what? Amber decided she was going to launch a movie, a film of her own. So when we come back on the girls, we're going to hit on that and talk about, we're going to show those cute little kids and that hubby and talk about his business, how he's doing uh, during the pandemic. So stay with us. You're watching the girls right here on SSPTV. So we're back with the girls and we have Amber Ettinger and she's talking to us from her apartment in New York City. Of course, you remember Amber is being the Obama girl started off her career, but now for the past 13 years, you've been doing a lot more things. And we mentioned before the break how you're now a producer and you just produced your first film with a best friend of yours, I understand. And it's called Sin Fronteras. Is that correct? That's correct. Without Nailed. borders. Okay, Nailed. tell us all about it. I watched it last night and you left me hanging, girlfriend. Oh, you watched it? I wanted it. more. Yay, thank you. Yeah, well, it's our first filmmaking endeavor. Two women filmmakers, like you mentioned, my best friend who we have, we've just, we've been friends for a super long time, decided we want to create our own content and put our own, tell our own stories instead of waiting for other people to hire us to tell theirs. So we wrote a script, I'd say four years ago with uh, writer director, Ricardo Perez Selsky. We collaborated with him. We told him we wanted a female dominated script, two strong, strong women and uh, gave him some ideas and he ran with it, came up with the script. Then we put it in the cabinet in the drawer and forgot about it for a while. I, stuff happened in my life. I moved from California back to New York, started my family. And I remember six months after having my son, Eden, my best friend calls me. She's like, I want to make this movie. And I'm like, I just had a baby. What are you talking about? And then I'm like, okay, let's do it. And we did it. And it just was amazing. We, we got the crew together. Um, we decided we were just going to film it in California. And we had, it was just it was just so fun to do because I've never had that hat. I've never had the hat of producer creator. So to have all that control and then be the actress, it was just amazing. It was hard and we learned a lot. Um, and we submitted it to quite a few film festivals. We got into about five, which was awesome. Like didn't expect that being our first film. And then we decided to uh, share it on YouTube and we, we put it out. And we're getting really, really great reception on it. So I'm really excited to move forward with it, possibly make it into a series, a limited series on Netflix. So we're gonna, we're starting to work on the show Bible and that's just episode after episode ideas to pitch to uh, networks to see if they wanna buy it. So that's our next step. Well, How are you feeling when you did this on your own? Was it kind of refreshing not to be so stifled by, by all of the legalities and you, you can and you can't, all the can'ts that you get when you go and you actually have to, you know, pitch yourself to get into these roles. Was, did it feel refreshing to be able to just break through? No yeah. boundaries, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. No borders, without borders. Um, it was so refreshing. And we were even, you know, we went as far as it, we were in the editing room helping edit the whole thing. Like, we were like, this is going here and take this part out. And we were involved in all of that, including the soundtrack. We met with different composers to get the right soundtrack and all the steps. So it felt, it feels like it was like our, another baby. It's like another baby. So we're very proud of it. It's not perfect, I, but I, I'm pretty proud of it. I thought we did a really great job and we, we have people asking for more. So that's great. Well, I'm one of them because I just thought that the character that you played, you could tell the passion that you had for the child. I don't want to give away the end of it, but it was um, very emotional watching it. 
uh, whatever point you're trying to make was driven across there. The cinematography was fabulous. I felt the dust in my face. And uh, I really, really thought that it was very well done. I mean, first time out of the gate, honey, congratulations to you and your whole crew. How long did it take you to make that? First of all, thank you so much. It's, it feels so good to hear. Um, it, the shooting only took four days, but the pre-production took you know months before. Well, we could see that you have a bright career ahead of you, not only in production, in acting, and whatever you're doing, it's just continue to do what you're doing. I know I keep in touch with your mom, so I have a little heads up on what you're doing. We do miss you back here in Hazleton, but you have a full life there. You have two children now, speaking of which. So um, what's that like being a mom of two kids? And they're pretty close in age. They're really close. Uh, one's going to be, my son Eden's going to be three next month. And my daughter, Alaria, just turned one. Um, they're fantastic. They changed my whole life. Obviously, they're the most important things to me. And I really wanted to focus my first year with both of them being just focused on them and not doing too much of anything else. Um, so the balance of trying to work with kids is definitely hard. It's definitely hard um, because even when you're not with them, you're still thinking about all the things you have to do for them, scheduling doctor's appointments and everything else. So it's a mom life and mom job never stops. You guys know it's okay. never stops. It's 24 seven. So I'm still learning how to find the balance. And I guess I was gifted this time in a way with the pandemic that I could focus on the kids and not worry about so, so much work. I'm not just saying this, but these are my favorite earrings and your mom actually made these and she sells all this custom Jewelry. She had to remember when uh, the store, she had a storefront on Broad Street for many years, but eclectic, like very, these are my favorite earrings and they're so lightweight, but I just wanted to wear them and have fun with it because I know she'll get a kick out of it and she's still selling jewelry, right? Online? Yes. Those earrings look so beautiful on you, by the way. Uh, they're fantastic. Yeah. That was my mom and I's jewelry line inspired by Amber, which she has since just taken over on her own. She's still designing and she's still selling antiques and vintage clothing all on Etsy and eBay. And she has a pretty great business online. And she does have a small store in uh, her city where she, in her town where she lives and also uh, like a little area in another kind of, what do you call it? Like gallery? Uh, near Savannah. So she's doing great. I'm happy for her. Amber, we got to part ways to, for now, but tell us how people can watch your movie. How can they support you? Thank you. You can watch the movie on youtube.com slash two girls, two minutes. And uh, it's the, it's right on the home screen right there when you click on that. And then you can follow uh, at Amber Edinger on Instagram and at stay the course films is our film production company. Well, I'm going to give you the two thumbs up. And I can't wait to see what we have in store, what next, what you have next for us. I hope that someone does pick you up with that uh, series that you have for this because it's you're a very strong actress. I am very, very um, proud to know you. I'm so tickled to death that you're successful in what you've been endeavoring because you did come up the hard way with trying to, you know, it wasn't just like an overnight success story for you. And uh, you really deserve it. And I hope that you and your friend are just up for an Academy Award someday. Yay. I love it. Thank you. Let's Thank keep putting you that out there. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, honey. Bye. Thank love you. to you. And we'll see our viewers next time right here on The Girl.